Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist here. And today I have the pleasure of bringing you this 2024 Subaru Forester Sport in the sapphire blue pearl exterior color. This is the only trim of Forester in 24 that you can get in this color. Very, very sharp looking color. I love it with the orange. I think the sport trim is perfectly suited for this blue. You've got those orange highlights at the front and on the sides, orange is the highlight color in the Sport. You've got that gloss black grille and you get the gloss black fog light surrounds with the vertical LED fog lights. And those are exclusive to the Sport and the Premier. Smaller, more aggressively styled headlights versus the pre-facelift Foresters. And of course, this is powered by a 2.5 liter four-cylinder boxer engine, produces 182 horsepower, plenty of power in a vehicle of this size while still retaining great fuel efficiency. You've got 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance, which is more than a half ton pickup. And we get these nice 18 inch black painted alloy wheels. That's exclusive on the Sport. They're the same wheels as the limited, just painted black, no machined alloy face. Mirror caps, we have integrated turn signals because Subaru's all about safety. More of that orange highlight strip along the bottom, the garnish. And you do also get the orange highlights on those roof rails and they indicate tie down locations. So front rear, tie down location. So if you get crossbars, you're putting something on the roof. This is a lot easier to put a rope through or a strap through and cinch something down. You've got all this room to slide if you do it there. This is anchored very, very nicely. Fuel door, like every other Subaru, is on the rear passenger side. It's the safe side if you ever have to fill with a jerry can on the side of the highway. When it's unlocked, driver door is unlocked, this is unlocked. Little pin shoots out when you lock it. Locks in that hole there. Regular 87 grade fuel, only you don't require premium or mid-grade. With the Sport, it's the same engine as the standards. Sport is really an aesthetics trim. Rear three-quarter shot, I really like it. I think this blue looks great in the sun or in the shade. Got the sport badge on the rear and we've got the rear finisher with the orange highlight as well now by that orange highlight there are backup sensors they will apply the brakes if it thinks you're going to hit something in reverse between speeds of 1 and 15 kilometers an hour we've got this nice gloss black trim goes into the black painted spoiler and that is exclusive on the sport the piece between the tail lights. We also have a black painted shark fin antenna, new for 24. To open it, we've got a little rubber switch between these two stars, or you can do it from the key fob or the door itself, of course. And in the rear of the Forester, you have a ton of room. Very tall, wide, and deep opening. Very square, easy to fit things in and pull things out of. Got a nice privacy cover, which is standard equipment. Hides everything from the top of the seats down. This is easy to remove as well. It's just a telescopic piece. That portion of the privacy cover is movable, and that's because these front seats can be reclined. And if this bar was all the way back here, you'd recline them into a solid bar, which wouldn't make sense. Got a nice cargo tray with a little bit of a lip on it to help contain any spills you may experience. We've got nice hard mount physical tie downs, one in each corner, along with grocery bag hooks on either side. Now, we do also have a 12 volt power point for any charging needs you may have, portable coolers, stuff like that. Underneath the false floor, we've got a nice storage compartment. And underneath this, we have our spare tire, which is a temporary spare tire. We've got our eye bolt for recovery, all of our spare tire tools. And you can kind of see it's cut out where the privacy cover can be tucked. So you can actually tuck it underneath here, which is nice. We have an LED cargo light in the hatch. You don't have to use it, you can have it shut off. We've got the hook. We can close it by pulling down. We can close it from the button. We can do it from the key fob or from the driver's seat. Or when the vehicle's not running, you can close and lock it. But it's running right now, so I can't lock it. It won't let you do that. Yeah, sharp looking SUV. It's that very boxy square style that you expect out of SUVs. And Subaru has always maintained that with that Forester. In the second row, there is a ton of pasture room. Even taller pastures fit, tons of headroom. Long-legged people fit comfortably as well. Lots of room for that. I actually find that I have the most amount of storage in the second row of a forest in our lineup, and I'm a bigger guy. We get the sport cloth, so the light and dark gray with the orange contrast stitching. Not any more durable than the premium cloth you get in the Touring, 
but it is quite nice. I like the texture. It's textured a little differently. That orange contrast stitching is great. Ties the vehicle interior to the exterior. Real nice close look up at that. Got that third seat belt out of the roof there. Everyone ends up with a three point harness. You can undo that and it will actually retract back into the roof. There's a fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. And out of the center console, we have two USB ports for charging along with two vents in addition to the vents underneath each front seat facing rearward. So the second row does heat up and cool down very effectively. We have three map back pockets on either side. And this is textured and is designed to be used as a step if you're loading something on the roof of the Force or if you get crossbars, something like that. The idea is you stand there instead of standing on the tire because the tire actually sits inside the fender, which means you're not going to get as much of your foot on the tire. And if you're standing directly on the tire, you're right at the back of the roof rail system. You'll probably end up leaning and you could put yourself in a precarious situation. So Subaru's all about safety. They've built that in. We've also got that little slot right there. And I get asked about that all the time. That's what that extra side impact crash safety bar Subaru's installed in this door locks into. It's designed to reduce intrusion into the passenger cab in the event of a collision, which I hope none of you ever have to experience. Door card, we have the soft touch sport cloth with the sport badge. The armrest is soft touch along with orange contrast stitching. We've got our power lock or our power window, sorry. A little bit of storage into a bottle holder. And if you need it, we have child lock. Now, child locks are not tied together. If this door is locked, that door is unlocked unless you go to that side and unlock it, of course. Up front, door card looks very, very similar to that of the rear with the soft touch materials and soft touch armrest. Front two windows are auto power windows, power mirror adjustment, regular power windows for the rear, and of course, window lock to stop people playing with them. We've got a little bit more storage that leads into a bottle holder there. It is a power driver seat, including lumbar support, and it's the same seating material up front as it is in the second row. We have an adjustable headrest. So it depends how close to the back of your head you want your headrest when you're driving, how far forward it's gonna tilt your head. We do get the panoramic sunroof in the Sport. And by the driver's left knee, we do have several buttons. We have the ability to open the rear hatch. It's a press and hold. After it starts moving, you can let your finger off the button. There you go. I can close it from here as well. Same button. Steering responsive headlights. So those are the headlights that swivel left or right at speed. You can turn those off if you don't like them. You can set the height for the rear tailgate so it doesn't open all the way. Perfect if you park in a garage with a low ceiling, something like that. We have a scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. We have the ability to turn off traction control, turn off the auto start stop, or disable your blind spot detection and cross traffic alert, which I'll show you that here. The blind spot detection, we've got a black screen on the side of the mirror and it illuminates like so on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot or is going to be in your blind spot momentarily. It's a great aid. It doesn't, re it doesn't eliminate shoulder checking, but it's a great aid. And actually speaking of shoulder checking, the visibility in the Forester, you have virtually no blind spots in the Forester. That's one of the things that it's known for, kind of like sitting in a greenhouse which I'm a huge fan of, it, it's awesome. Steering wheel itself, leather wrapped with the orange contrast stitching. We have that big orange centerpiece there. Again, orange is the highlight color, it ties it all together. We've got these buttons down here, these arrows change our center display, gives us a bunch of different information depending on what we wanna look at. Most people settle on the digital speedometer. We do have exclusive sport gauges rimmed in orange, See, there's only 15 kilometers on this one. Left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth and audio controls. You can accept calls, issue voice commands, hang up or decline phone calls, source switches from AM to FM to USB to Bluetooth, etc. Info, we'll change our small info screen up there. I'll show you that in a second. Got our volume control, and we have the ability to change between presets here, which is nice. The Super's trying to go hands-free with that, and they've done a good job with it. On the right-hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Both of those systems use these two black boxes, those color stereo eyesight cameras, to look for cyclists, pedestrian, road lines, and vehicles. These are also responsible for lane sway assist and your automatic emergency braking, which saves you 10% on your basic insurance here in BC. When I turn on the cruise, I get an image of the Forester there, and you can see there's three bars ahead of it, four bars ahead of it. That is all 
That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you'll follow at if you catch up while using cruise. Four bars, 100 kilometers an hour, roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you. Below that, we have our lane centering. So we have those gray lines on either side of the distance markers now. Above 60 kilometers an hour, if the eyesight cameras can see those road lines, it'll illuminate white on the corresponding side. And then it'll actually give you gentle steering input to help keep you centered in your lane. Great, I didn't think I'd actually like it, but it's fantastic for the second half of a long day of driving. And that's just that button right there. You don't have to drive with it on. The adaptive cruise, you can actually turn to regular cruise and you just press and hold this down arrow and you get rid of those bars and you have the traditional cruise control icon, press and hold the down arrow again and you're back to adaptive. Intelligent and sport sharp driving modes. Intelligent is what it defaults to for everyday driving. Sport sharp is race car forester mode. Turn it on, you can see the power comes on earlier. Torque curve comes on much more aggressively. Uh, you're gonna use more fuel, you're gonna sit at a higher RPM, but you're gonna go faster sooner. It's more fun for more spirited driving. To go along with that, we do have these paddles, downshift and upshift. You can manually select your own gears, even with the automatic CVT. So great for going down hills or downshifting to help pass. Bottom left of the steering column, hook your thumb and you've got tilt and telescopic, depending how you like to sit. It's fantastic, just put it back up to lock it in place. We have our little information screen up here. You change it with the info button on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, it gives you a bunch of different information. Depends what you wanna look at. You've got weather, what you're listening to, fuel economy for trip A, trip B, you can change settings. Lots of options here. It's also where our climate control displays and it ranges from 15 on the low side all the way up to 29 and a half. Freezing to tropical, depending how you and your pastures want it. Easy, easy to see where your fan strength is, easy to see where your airflow is being directed. And you'll always have your clock and your exterior thermometer there. We have Subaru's easy to use eight inch infotainment system. It's all touchscreen, or we have the buttons down below here, physical buttons. Under apps, we have wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. You'll gain access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name. And when we put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up. Rear assist braking's on, parking sensors are on. You can see the top of the bumper there, so you have something to relate to. Lines change, show you where you're gonna end up if you keep your wheel turned that way. And you can clean the backup camera from inside the vehicle, which is absolutely fantastic. That washable backup camera from inside is great. You don't have to get out and wipe it with your thumb. It's fantastic. We still have physical volume and tuning knobs. We have four-way flashers. And then we have the ability to change our climate control. So climate controls are down here, driver side temperature, passenger side temperature, fan strength, mode change where the airflow is coming from. If I adjust the passenger side temperature to something different, if they get out, I hit sync and it goes back to driver control, same temperature, really easy to use. Below that, we've got a storage cubby with two USBs, an auxiliary and a 12 volt power point. I believe this is rubberized to stop devices or change or anything from like that from flopping around, which is nice. It is an automatic CVT. We'd have that manual mode where we use the paddles to manually select our own gears. And of course, orange, synthetic shift boot with orange, which is nice. This is one of the first trim levels where you get dual function X mode. So X mode is like four x four low in a pickup for that slow off-road rough terrain stuff. We have to be going under 20 kilometers an hour, twist it to the left, X mode comes up, X mode comes up, twist it to the right, deep snow and mud and it also turns off traction control so dual function the deep snow and mud mode allows for excess wheel spin to chew you up now if i exceed 40 kilometers now it shuts off or i press down and it goes back to regular intelligent or sport sharp whatever i had it in got our park brake pull up to activate foot on the brake and push down to deactivate auto vehicle hold is like a brake holder for construction drive through or rush hour traffic I'm not a huge fan of it myself because I don't use it. I don't have it in my vehicle, but you know, if you're going to be sitting for 10 minutes with your foot on the brake before you potentially move, it is nice for that. Heated seats high and low for both the driver and passenger. That cloth material heats up very, very nicely. Got some really nice deep cup holders with a little bit of storage there. There's a soft touch armrest with a decent amount of storage in it. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but there is a 12 volt power point there with the lines there, you can run cords through without crushing them when your arm's down on the armrest. Up top, we have our map lights. We have the ability to turn off lane sway, the ability to turn off automatic emergency braking. When the My Subaru app is 
subscribed, we'll get a green light. You've got SOS and roadside assistance. They're exactly what they sound like. We've got our sunglass storage along with our card holders on both sun visors. We've got a vanity mirror with light and you've got a sun shade extender. Great if the sun's directly at your left or right. So that is a quick look at the 2024 Subaru Forester Sport in the Sapphire Blue Pearl. This is the only trim level in the 24 Foresters that you can get this beautiful color in. Great in the shade, great in the sunlight. Those orange highlights go perfectly with the Sapphire Blue. I think it's an absolutely standout, attractive, aesthetically pleasing Forester. Obviously orange is not a highlight color that's for everyone, but I think the vast majority of you out there like the color combo itself. Thank you for watching my quick walkthrough of the 2024 Subaru Forester Sport behind me. If you guys have any questions about this car behind me, any of the tech in it, any of the vehicles in our lineup, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to answer those questions for you. If you're looking for a car, live in British Columbia or close to British Columbia, reach out. Love to help you find your perfect Subaru. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk soon.